Live here at Sapphire behind us is the press conference, the co-CEOs, Jim Schnabe, Bill McDermott about to come on in about 10 minutes. Um, but obviously we're Cube, we're getting all the action and we want to obviously get as much content as we possibly can and we have a customer from SAP, Pierre Bobonier. Very good. Welcome to the Cube. Uh, tell you. us a little bit about what you do and then we'll d dive into some conversation. Sure, uh, I'm head of marketing for the STM, which is the Société de Transport de Montréal, which is the bus and uh, metro system in Montreal. And, um, and uh, um, we carry about uh, 1.5 million people a day uh, in our metro. And what we wanted to do uh, with uh, SAP was to launch a loyalty program. Uh, we want to, uh, to think totally out of the box, come out with a program that would be uh, different than what you see out there today with the cards and points and all that. We wanted to innovate completely. We had a co-innovation session with, uh, several co-innovation sessions with SAP. And, um, and uh, we did come out of, with a program which we just launched uh, a week and a half ago and we're very proud because the results are tremendous. Uh, we're talking about uh, a, an iPhone application that our customers will um, uh, use. They will enter their smart card number in it, and the smart card is what you use to charge your fares and to validate your fares. And, um, and when you enter your um, office card number into the application, we get to know instantly who you are, and when we ask you to give us your preferences and all that. And then once we have that, we're in a position to uh, send to you uh, on your iPhone app uh, some very relevant information and offers. So therefore, I can tell you that you spent, uh, let's say, uh, $20 too much last month uh, on, your, on, on, on the public transit, and therefore I recommend a monthly pass. Um, I can recommend that you go from nine monthly passes a year to 12, with giving you a small incentive. I can tell you uh, that if you take the metro at eight o'clock in the morning and your nose is right on the window, that perhaps if you were to take it 15 minutes before or 15 minutes after, you would be sitting probably in the metro. So yeah. I can give you relevant, but also uh, um, I can talk to you about what you could do to really improve your um, experience uh, with, with, um, with the STM. Pierre, you know, you, okay, go ahead, sorry. Yeah, in addition to this, uh, it, we, we have about 340 retail partners into the program. Uh, so retail partners which are in the category of transport. So it could be uh, um, a car rental, it could be big C, like the bike rental service, it could be a commuter to a car sharing program, uh, via rail, uh, which is a Canadian um, um, uh, uh, train transportation. Um, so that's, <coughs> that's the, the the transportation partner. We also have retail partners for everyday purchases such as uh, grocery and pharma, but we also have lots of mom and pop operations throughout the city where our customers live. And these small uh, mom and pop operations cannot afford to have their own loyalty program. They cannot afford to communicate to the people in Montreal. And therefore, what we're allowing, uh, allowing them to do through this program is to target this group of customers and talk to them and give them some offers. So examples of this is um, um, I'm sitting on the bus 168 and I'm going to Nuns Island, which is a suburb of Montreal, and suddenly I've got a pop-up on my application saying, what have you decided to make for supper tonight? And by the way, we have a new arrival of lobsters from PEI, and if you check in now and show up within the next hour, we'll have a 20% bonus or saving on your lobsters. And we'll have the sauce that comes with that, we'll match the wine, we'll give you the baguette to go with it, and then uh, we'll deliver to your I'm home as soon as you tell I'm us hungry you're there. I'm hungry already. <laughs> well, I want some mussels too from PEI. <laughs> yeah. Let's get some mussels and lobster. For um. the, um, <laughs> the, the Opera House in Montreal, for example, uh, two hours before the show, has 100 seats left. And these seats, as you know, are perishable, right? If they're not sold, they go empty. Yeah. So they tell us, why don't you offer that to your customers? The first 10 customers that will check in on the application will get free tickets. The, the next 10 will get a two for one, the next 10 will get 20% off. So that's how you add value. The key here was instant gratification. We didn't want points, we didn't want people to accumulate points to eventually win something or get something. We wanted to uh, have uh, our partners yeah. to interact with our customers. I mean, adverti advertising is now commerce, and you know, for the folks out there watching might not know that SiliconANGLE, Wikibon, going back to 2009, was really one of the first media companies focusing on cloud, mobile, and social. And one of the things that we really saw was that with big data and with cloud, you can transform industries and with mobile it's great and you know you see things on the transportation side which you're in and we see things like Uber and these really high flying startups that's where the people are and so when you touch the, the person this comes back to Jonathan Becker and Bill McDermott's conversation around marketing to the persona of one using analytics where you can actually use uh, data and applications mobile apps in this case with geo and everything else to really target a great experience and and so with that I want to ask you a question with that as kind of a setup is you know 
okay, I got a nap, this is maps in San Francisco, oh, hey, the bus is coming on this time. It seems like a really basic utility, but at the end of the day, you have a consumer touch point, and when you have that, you can expand. So I want to ask you, when you went into this, did you have that idea, like we're going to expand into other markets? And because it seems to me that you've been enabled to go in and do so much more. Definitely. You know what we wanted to do. Uh, the, the key, the key phrase here is the right product at the right time for the right customer at the right place. And uh, this has a certain level of relevancy, which which basically uh, ensures that the customer will. Uh, transact with those customers of ours. Definitely there's some interest out there for us to expand to other markets, whether it's public transit, but other uh, retail, uh, other industries completely, and definitely this is where we're going with that, uh, because that makes so much sense. Yeah, it seems uh, to me that it's, transportation is particularly well uh, positioned to take advantage of data. Uh, you know, when you've got a, a smartphone application that you're, you know, you're, you basically can, you know where all your customers are going, when they're going there, you can collect all that data, analyze it, potentially do some predictive analytics, figure out where they may be to help package offers that are, are most uh, appealing to them. And one of the things we've talked about on, uh, on theCUBE is while there's, you know, there's the tension a little bit in, this, in, in the big data space between kind of privacy concerns, uh, but also consumers you know, want targeted offers. So if you can, as a uh, service provider, if you can offer, use all that data you're collecting to, to put offers in front of people that are really relevant, that they want, they're more, they'll be less inclined to be concerned about some of the privacy issues. How do you balance those types of issues um, among your, uh, I guess, riders? Um, has that been an issue at all, and, and how, do you, how do you approach it? <coughs> that was uh, one of the first objection that we discussed with the SAP people is, uh, we have probably one of the strictest laws in the world about privacy, so what we wanted to do this so that the customer really didn't feel that Big Brother's was you know, mm -hmm. on his back. And uh, what we've done is, uh, um, like privacy laws require that anything that you collect on a customer has to be critical, mission critical to your enterprise. Well, what we've done is we've separated the data so anything that is mission critical to the enterprise is in data, one database, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, w w whatever is preferences and information on that customer and personal information is in another database. And, the, 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 and there's, a, there's a Chinese wall in between the two, and these um, cannot talk to one another. So I cannot go back to <clears throat> one individual with all of this information, I can go back to um, a segment of, of my customer base and send them some offers. Um, and, uh, and, and this way uh, we manage to satisfy our lawyers and make sure that our customers don't feel uh, that we're um, going beyond really what we're uh, allowed to do. Mm -hmm. um, and I wonder, uh, you know, as a marketer, you know, we hear a lot about really big data and analytics is really changing the way people <laughs> do marketing. It's changing, uh, we've, we've even heard that you know, the CMO and the head of marketing inside enterprises is really going to start to be the, the lead buyer of uh, technology, essentially, over, even over the CIO, and that, we're seeing that shift now. I wonder if you could talk from your perspective how the uh, emergence of new technologies around big data, cloud, social, and mobile are changing the way marketers operate. How has that changed your mindset about how you do your job? Well, it's, uh, for us, it's, uh, it's a completely new way of looking at things. Uh, public transit, you wouldn't think that we're great marketers, you know, because <clears throat> we deliver a service and that's it. But uh, we need to think beyond that. We need to think beyond who we are and try to see how we can really improve the experience of customers. And uh, by doing this, uh, by uh, understanding really our customers, we can generate loyalty. One of the big uh, issues in public transit is that our customers come and go. Every year there's some people leaving us, new people coming in, and we want to understand why they're leaving us, um, and, and these new customers coming in, why are they choosing us? So that we can basically set all the right buttons really to attract more and more consumers, because that's our goal, is to increase ridership. If you mm -hmm. want. So retention is the big, the big game as far as we're concerned, and using technology is really uh, the way to get to it as far as we're concerned and uh, uh, we um, our aim is to increase uh, by about 40 percent ridership uh, in Montreal um, in, until um, 2020 so uh, so we feel that this is one would, that will be one ingredient if you if you want helping right. to, to, to reach our objective. well that uh, you know leads me to another question around uh, you know some really interesting use cases here for analytics but how did you tie that to the business case so the business case sounds like okay we've got a goal to increase ridership Analytics uh, and, and social and mobile, the, the applications that you've been talking about are, yeah. are, a, are a tactic or a way to, to, to achieve that uh, business initiative. 
Uh, talk about how you tie those together, the technology, and actually uh, to actually tying that to a business goal and, and delivering business value. Right, <clears throat> so what we're doing is we, we, we're comparing some of the tactics that we have with other tactics that we've done in the past which have generated some uh, gains. For example, telling people that, um, that they should move to the monthly pass or they should move to the uh, nine, uh, 12 month pass um, by informing them, by talking to them, by uh, letting them know that those products exist, we know that a percentage of our, our population will move from one uh, group to another and then we will uh, generate additional revenue and ridership to that. You know, mm -hmm. So that's one example. There are several examples like this uh, of um, ways that we can influence behaviors, get people uh, to move from uh, um, uh, from peak time to off peak, to travel more often with us, because uh, if you travel only 40 times a month, uh, that means that you only use it for, for, for work. So we want people to come at night, to come during the weekend as well. So by talking to them, giving them incentives, we'll get people to use it more often and therefore achieve those uh, more uh, larger objectives if, if you want from a marketing standpoint. Very yeah. good. Pierre, how did SAP, with their co-innovation, get you through your spot? Because I think you know, you're a great example of, again, this transformation. Yep. where you have a business opportunity on top of what you built. Yeah. How did that all come together? Well, you know, we're, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we're a very conservative uh, type of organization, right? And, and therefore, they've uh, allowed us to, um, to, to brainstorm, to uh, blackboard, yellow stick it, and uh, come up with a methodology that would um, 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 ensure that, uh, that um, uh, we become um, very innovative in our ways. Uh, they basically uh, created an environment really that made it uh, possible for us to spell out truly what, what, what we wanted to do and where we're headed and come up with some solutions to objections that we had from either our lawyers or uh, different regulatory groups to arrive to, to where we are right now. And also to come up with some ways that um, what we're doing is attractive to retailers. Uh, 340 retailers is quite significant. It's probably one of the loyalty program that has the most retailers. Um, and to get them excited, retailers um, are also very traditional in their ways. They use uh, flyers, they use mass advertising. Uh, this kind of a program for them is it's something that they have in their 2025 vision. And now we're allowing these mom and pop, but also these chains uh, across Canada uh, to uh, test the geolocalization. You know? So each food store of IGA in Montreal has at the very same time different offers. One is for the bread, one is for the meat, one is for the, they all have a different offer and this offer may change by hour of the day, you know? Yeah. So for them, it's a total shift in terms of. It's, uh, it's a great example and I think one of the things that's exciting about your, your application is, is that you have a touch point with the consumer. Uh, with transit, so that's that's a real good penetration. So there's some utility there. Yeah. So, but that's not just the business model. You have a retail back end now. You're expanding out on that touch point by providing additional value that might not have been available without mobile and big data. So, you know, hey, kudos to you guys. Congratulations. Thank and you. Uh, I think it's a great example of what we've been saying about other opportunities for other customers that might be looking at how do I evolve and modernize my business and and get new opportunities, new growth. So the question for you is. What advice do you have for other folks out there who are sitting there saying, hey, I have access to customers, consumers, how do I create a, a business model and a technology framework around this co-innovation? What advice would you give your peers? Well, do, uh, do sit down with your, uh, with your experts in, in, uh, in IT, that's for sure, but also um, uh, go out of the box, try to uh, come up with ways uh, really that will uh, ensure that you, you can really spell out what you're trying to achieve, but without uh, these uh, limitations that you, we always have in our mind, and, and try to, 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 to identify really these key objectives and, and try to find some solutions that, um, that are um, out of the box, really, truly. Okay, we're here live in the press area in the Global Communication Center. This is SiliconANGLE's exclusive coverage of Sapphire. Now behind me is the co-CEO who's about to hit the stage, and we're going to cover the press conference live here on SiliconANGLE.com. We're going to go uh, we're going to go do some sh uh, sh schmoozing with the CEOs. We'll be right back, but also watch the press conference. We're going to be carrying it live as they get set up. We'll be right back with more interviews after the press conference, so continue to watching, and thanks for watching. We'll be right back. <laughs>